Hello, hello, and good afternoon to you. This is Bishop Ron C. Hill, and I'm the pastor of the Love and Unity Church of God in Christ right here at 1840 South Wimbledon Avenue in the city of Compton, one short block off of the 91 freeway. I want to thank and praise God that I am in fellowship with men and women of many who are praying, they are fasting, they are reading their Bibles, and then others, and, and, and some of those same persons, I should say, are involved in the promotion of the gospel of Christ to the people outside the four walls of the church. This church is anointed by the Holy Ghost, and we enjoy the presence of God right here. It is wonderful. The Spirit of God can be tangible. That is to say, you can sense His presence. Now, I realize that we walk by faith and not by sight, but there are times when the Holy Spirit can move in such a pronounced way until you can actually feel his presence. And it's on this last Sunday, uh, that is exactly what happened right here in this ministry. I mean, people were worshiping God, they were praising God, and they didn't want to stop. I mean, they went on and on and on uh, enjoying the presence of God. And I, and I praise God for it. And I really believe that it has much to do with the fact that Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. in the morning, we have persons who come to the church and they read scriptures and they pray. Also, this week we have a number of people who are fasting until 5 p.m. praying and asking God to send his glory in his church. I don't know about you, friends, but I want to see God manifest his glory. A part of the vision that is inside of me is that I want to be a part of a ministry where people are genuinely being born again. I want to be a part of a ministry where people are being sanctified and to be a part of a ministry where people are being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of power and speaking in tongues. And I want to be a part of a ministry where people are being healed in their body of all manner of sicknesses and diseases and to be a part of a ministry where the people are casting the devil out and where people are paying their tithe, giving liberal offerings, and where they are prospering financially. I tell you, listen, listen, when you pay your tithe in a ministry where nobody's being born again, where nobody's being baptized via the Holy Ghost, there's nobody being healed in the body, no, no demons are being cast out, no miracles, no sign. You just go to church and you get emotional, but, but there's no confirmation of the kingdom of God. May I tell you, that's a bad place. And I stress, that's a bad place to pay your tithe and give offerings because, listen, you want to pay, pay your tithe and give offerings where there's spiritual productivity. Where I pastor over here, there are some people who are doing remarkably well because they're tithers, they're offering givers, but the backdrop is this. This ministry is a ministry that is promoting the gospel of Christ outside the four walls of the church as well as inside. And people are being convicted. And people are, are, are repenting. And people are accepting Christ as their Savior right here. And people are being baptized in the Holy Ghost right here because of the prayer and faith of the people. When there is a coming together of people who have faith in the gospel, when there's a coming together of people who really believe that Christ Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, they really believe in the miracles and signs and wonders that the Bible records of him, and they believe that he suffered and he bled and died on the cross and that he rose from the dead on the third day. They believe that. And when these persons has repented of their sins and has accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they are born from above. And then when these same persons begin to press in on God, as the Apostle Paul said, 
I, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You've got to be hungry. The Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. So you must be hungry for the things of God. And then, of course, these same persons must be involved in pursuing a lifestyle of holiness and a lifestyle of walking in the love of God with the full assurance that, that we're not living holy because we want to be saved. And we aren't walking in love because we want to be saved. No, on the contrary, we're doing that because we are saved. We are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, and we don't boast about it. So our salvation is settled. We know that we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We know that we have been born of the Holy Ghost, and we know that we're in the body of Christ. And now we are pursuing God with all deliberate speed and because, because we know that there's much more power to be experienced in the body of Christ than what we've experienced. It has to be more than just talk. It has to be more than somebody tantalizing your intellect and or somebody plugging into your soul area just to get you emotional, to get you jumping and crying. It's got to be more than that. And it is more than that. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And beside all of that, anywhere the kingdom of God is released, it brings power. It brings authority. And what is it that God wants to do? It is God's will for people to be saved. It's God's will for people to be sanctified. It's God's will for people to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and for them to walk therein. It's God's will that the church enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. It is God's will for the church to enjoy the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing and power of the Spirit. Why? so that we can adequately success, uh, uh, represent him in the world and have success in the promotion of the gospel. It's God's will that we preach Christ's gospel under the influence and under the power of the Holy Ghost so that other people can have the option of receiving Christ or rejecting him. Many people in America today, they're not rejecting Christ. They haven't even heard from him. Because there's so few people in the American church who are anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost and who are going to the world. We, we like to go into the big domes and the big arenas and where the crowds are and get fascinated and, 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 and get, get all excited about what the preacher is saying from the pulpit. But it's got to be more than what the preacher is saying from the pulpit. That, that, that message has to get inculcated within your soul. you you got to get God down in you, Christ in you the hope of glory, and then walk in that power so that you can be used of God to, to go out there and tell sinners that Jesus is Lord, to go out there to tell sinners that he's a healer and that he's a way maker. I had three persons just recently came and told me uh, last month, in the month of July, in the month of July, there was a pastor's wife who had come to one of our meetings and at the end of the service, her husband said, would you pray for my wife? I said, of course I would. I prayed for her. She began to weep and cry, and the power of God came over her. And when I saw her a few days ago, she said, Pastor Hill, I'm healed in my body. And I got excited with her. There was another lady. We had a healing service, and uh, I, I laid hands on her. And she had a cyst on her ovary. And, and it was painful. She was out in a lot of discomfort and whatever, whatever you. And she said, after I laid hands on her, she didn't feel anything. I laid hands on her, she didn't feel anything. By the way, when somebody's anointed to pray for the sick, you don't always feel anything. Sometimes you may get strained in the spirit, and other times you just walk away. She didn't feel anything, but it wasn't long before she felt like she wanted to have her period. And uh, she passed that cyst, and now she's completely healed. Another lady in the church, they had taken pictures of her, and they discovered that she had uh, cancer in her breast. 
Uh, on this particular night, I was hand, laying hands on the sick. Power of God touched her and uh, now became fine any cancer in her. And in fact, it was so, such a, a spectacular thing until a doctor wanted to know, well, 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 what church do you go to? In fact, the doctor wanted to come and testify to the fact that they, they saw it on the film, on the x-ray. They saw the cancer. They were treating the cancer, but now it's gone because of the healing power uh, that is in the name of Jesus. And so I'm, I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for bishops and pastors all over America and the world that we would begin to believe God that the same work that Jesus did would do the same work. As a fact, note here in St. John chapter 14, putting in at verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then he goes on in a few verses later, he says, and if you, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. You see, friends, when we're asking God to do things that he's predisposed to do, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. God loves sinners, and it is his desire to save them. God loves people, and God does not want you sick. And God does not want you bound by devils and demons. And God does not want you emotionally distraught all the time, depressed and frustrated. That's not God's will for your life. You know, the Bible said, Jesus said, they made this statement. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to, and to preach deliverance to the captive and to set them free and, and, and get, giving sight to the blind and delivering those who are in bondage to devils and demons. In other words, Jesus was saying, listen, I'm anointed to preach the gospel, and I'm also anointed to do ministry. And I want every man of God to know, every woman of God to know, that you, sir, and you, ma'am, you are anointed by God to preach the gospel, and you are anointed to do ministry in terms of seeing people healed in the soul and seeing people healed in the mind and in the body. This is the work that God is going to do. I'm telling you, friends, listen, this work is going to come forward prior to the return of Jesus Christ. So you, you either get on board or you're going to get left. Note here in St. Matthew's uh, chapter 4 and uh, putting in at verse number 17. From that time, Jesus uh, began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I will say that to you today. If you're viewing this today and you have sin in your life, may I urge you to repent. Change your mind. Come out of your sins. Believe the gospel of Christ and allow Jesus uh, uh, not only to be your savior, but allow Jesus to become, to become your Lord and your master. Amen, amen. Note in verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Praise the Lord, brother. Brother Bishop, brother Apostle, sister Pastor, man of God, woman of God, whoever you are, let me challenge you. Please know that if you walk in obedience to Jesus, you will become a fisher of men. It is virtually impossible for an individual to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and not have a burden to win souls to Christ. Why? Because he pours that into you. This is what he wants to teach us to do. This is the primary purpose of your being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, because the Bible in Acts 1 and 8 says, and you shall be, be and you shall become my witnesses. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
And in the Greek text, the word witness means mortar. It's more to it than just talking to people about Jesus. There is a lifestyle that God has, 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 con, has, has, has called the church to do, a lifestyle that we have been commissioned to do. And that lifestyle is one of death, death to self. Jesus said, if many men come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And I'm telling you, friends, anybody who has the faith to trust in that bloody gospel, to repent of their sins, to accept Christ as Savior, and begin to obey God, you will get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And besides all of that, you will have an internal desire to win souls to Christ, and you will not be able to shake it. You cannot obey Jesus and not have a burden to win souls to Christ. Note in verse number 20. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zedadee, and his, John, his brother, in a ship with Zedadee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. They too began to follow him. And the same goes true for them. They followed him. They got trained by him. And they began to be a promoter of the gospel. Verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So, so we don't only win souls to Christ. But we're in the business of preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of power. My friends, again, when the kingdom of God is manifest, when the kingdom of God is released in a locale, all devils and demons have to back up because God will drive them out. Just like if you go into a dark room and you hit the light switch, you don't have to wonder, you don't have to speak in tongues and shout and have a praise break to, to, to hope that the darkness of Lee will leave. You don't, you don't entertain that one moment. You hit that switch and you know what's going to happen. When that light comes into that room, darkness is expelled. And the same thing applies when we pray on through to the release of the kingdom of God. That's when the devil will leave your home, leave your church, and leave your city, brother. It is the releasing, I said, listen, it is the releasing of the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen to this again in, in verse 23 of uh, St. Matthew's 4.23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus was both a teacher and a preacher. You know, friends, I love a good preaching. I love it. Amen. I do more teaching than I do preaching, but I love both. Sometimes I preach, sometimes I get animated, and, and I do the yelling and the whatever. And fine, fine. But, but, but Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And he was, first of all, I said that he was teaching in their synagogue, first of all teaching in their synagogue, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And what happened is that he began to see all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. They got, they got healed in Jesus' name. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And he healed them, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Look at what happened. When Jesus began to teach and to preach the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God was released in the person of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, brother preacher, brother preacher, if you're sitting up with a handful of members, let me show you how 
to get an overrunning crowd. Let me show you how to get a crowd of people in your church. Let, let me show you how to have all the money that you need to do ministry. If you're supposed to be on radio, internet, television, or whatever the case may be, because I'm talking to pastors and preachers, and you know God has given you visions and dreams about where your ministry should be, but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen because you've been listening to the wrong voices. You've been listening to voices that has dumbed Christianity down. Christianity in America has been dumbed down by many of the major preachers that, that have millions of followers in this country because they're talking to them about now, but they're not magnifying the kingdom of God and, and actually what the church is supposed to be doing. It isn't enough for you to say, oh, I got a blessing. I got a house. I got a car. I got married. That's not enough. The church should be seeking the face of God for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. And once that kingdom is released, you know what happened to Jesus? They began to follow him from all of the cities around there. He became famous. And, hey, brother, your church can become famous. All we need to do is get an aggregation of people. We need to get a, a team of people. Now, 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 hear me. In most cases, all of the members that you have in that church will not fall in line and follow you. So you need to ask God to give you revelation and discernment as to who they are that you can disciple in this fashion. You get a core of people who will get into agreement and begin to pray on through and to believe God to manifest forth his glory. We need to see God's glory in the church. It's got to be more than the declaration. There's got to be the confirming manifestation of God's power in the church. You got people making derogatory statements about the church and they're laughing at the church and saying we are irrelevant and we're not this and we're not that. But in your heart, you know better. You, come on, brother, preacher, sister, you, you know better. You know that God is real. But how can we get God off of the pages of the Bible to get him released in our hearts? Jesus said these words, Believe on me as the scriptures have said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So, so brother, pastor, sister, pastor, listen to this. If your ministry become a ministry where you have a core of people out there preaching the gospel of Christ, and winning souls to Christ, that church is going to grow. And not only that, don't just have the people out there doing it. You pastors must get involved with the Great Commission. Learn how to do it. If you don't know how, you reach out to me and I'll teach you how to get out there and do it. Promote Christ's gospel. Number two, teach people how to sanctify themselves. People need to know how to walk this word and how to defend themselves against the, the attacks of the devil. Hey, brother, watch out for your ego. Watch out for your pride. Watch out for them sex demons. They'll come after you to corrupt you and pervert you. So you got to learn how to put on the whole arm of God and you walk in sanctification and teach the people you pastor to walk in sanctification. Then get into the business of praying for people to receive the baptism and power of the Holy Ghost. We preachers need to know that we can get this anointing on us. The apostle Peter did it. The apostle Paul did it. And hey, brother, hey, sister, you can do it too. Think for a moment. You get people born again. You're teaching them how to be sanctified. And now you're laying hands on them and they're getting baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the next thing is this. I believe God to anoint you to lay hands on the sick and the sick recover of all manner of sickness and disease, just like Jesus did. And remember, Jesus got people healed and Jesus got people baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. He cast it out. He cast the devils out. And guess what, friends? He said, the same work that I'm doing shall you do also. We should look at the scriptures, discern what Jesus did, and get out there and do the same work. And if it, if it isn't flowing in you, get on your face, repent of your sins, get into the feeding on the word, 
read your Bible, fast and pray, fast and pray and read your Bible until, until this anointing comes in you and begin to flow out of you. You can do this. Oh, yes. It's God's will for you, sister. It's God's will for you, brother. But you've got to repent and get your heart in, in concert with the word of God and he'll flow through you and this work will take place. Now, can you imagine now? Your church is winning souls of Christ, getting people sanctified, getting people baptized, people with the Holy Ghost, getting people healed in the body, and you're casting out the devil, and you're teaching people how to pay their tithe and how to give liberal offerings. You're teaching them how to defend themselves. You get all of this in those people, and they begin to go to the world. Your, the church where you pastor is going to have plenty of money and plenty of members. And whatever it is that God has given you to do, you'll get it done. Oh, I pray that you'll get this. This is for you, brother. I, you look, Listen, you know who this is for. Now, by the way, those of you uh, who believe in the vision that God has given us this, this ministry, I'm believing God for the manifestation of the kingdom of God so that people can get saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost, healed in the soul, healed in the body, have the devil to be cast out and where people can prosper and have all the money they need. That's my vision. And I need those of you who believe in such a vision. I need you to join me with this vision. And I need you to plant a financial offering in this vision. There's a number on the screen. I want you to send an offering to help me pay for ministry. And if you do that, begin to pray with me and let us believe God for a great move of the Holy Ghost. Let us believe God to save the lost. Let us believe God to sanctify the believers. Let us believe God to baptize and fill with the Holy Ghost. Let us believe God to heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. Let us believe God to heal our marriages and, and to save our sons and to set people free from drug addiction and from alcoholism and from cigarette smoking. Let, let's believe God to heal the sick body and the sick mind. God can do all of the above, but it needs people like you and I to get into agreement. Well, let's pray on through to the baptism in power of the Holy Ghost. And let's believe God to do just that. Hey Amen. That's an I'm on the screen. I need to hear from you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Next time. Consider financially supporting Food for Your Soul television broadcasts. Together, we can change lives. Your support will allow us to reach the world with the good news that Jesus saves. You can give online at loveandunity.org. Click the Give button, and it will take you to our secure page where you'll have the option to give by credit card, debit card, or bank account. You can set up a one-time or reoccurring gift by linking your preferred payment method. You can also text a gift by texting the amount you desire to 310-507-1181 or mail to P.O. Box 5449, Compton, California, 90224. Thank you in advance for your support.